Here we are. I don't even know. I don't think I've ever said any dates on the episodes yet. So whatever date that you're listening to this podcast, that's the date it is. All right. Enough enough shenanigans. Okay. I'm done with. I'm done with. I'm done with order. That's what I'm fucking done. I'm done with order. You know. You know. Everybody's living in order. Everyone's living in structure. I'm done with it. You know what? Whatever this episode. You know what? This is this is episode 386. How about that? Skin's crawling. This is 386 episode 386, which is not. You know, you can tell by the. No, there's no way this is episode 386. No way, because if it was three episode 386, my voice would probably sound like a. Probably more more soothing, more like Jordan Peterson ish. I don't know. That's the evolution that I'm trying to get to. <laughs> just, you know, I just, just, just in hierarchy of, you know, ignorant, un, in, uninformed to, to, wow, this guy went to Harvard, didn't he? That's what I want people to, to, to get away from this podcast. But, um, as far as dates, I can't really tell you dates because I don't know what episode this is going to be and what date it's going to air. So, just go to my Instagram, guys, all right, at Chase Abel uh, on Instagram. Pretty much you can just go there. There's a website I got, too, www.chaseable.com for dates and all the stuff and shenanigans that I'm going to be doing. You guys can go there. So, And you also can check me on. Send me messages, you know, things of that sort. Um, and I'll do my best to respond in a timely manner. So feeling good worked out you know kicked my ass today in the gym you know i feel like a good day i feel like a good start of the week you got to get a good workout in and it has to be productive you know it's got to be a productive workout monday morning you know early get the blood flowing get the body warm ligaments you know mental uh you know fluids need to be you know just up and running um so yeah, I think a good workout is a is a good start to a good week. I think you, I think if people started doing that, they could give them a good uh, a good energy booster, you know, quote unquote booster. I'm not talking about the vaccine booster, by the way. If you were confused, I'm talking about natural energy boosters. Um, wow, I kind of sounded like Dr. Fauci there for a second. I think natural energy boosters. Nope, not at all. I got to read. I think that's what it comes down to. I got to read. I got to do something. I got to, I got to, there's no, when people ask me questions, I can't just answer them directly. I need to, I have to give like a story. There's like an arc. There's an illusion. I can't just answer questions like some people are masters of, you know, you ever have that person that they're just, you know, you're asking them a question. They're just like, nope. Yep. And that's it. (laughs) <laughs> you know i just i gotta get i gotta be a little bit better at being uh quicker with my thoughts but you know what whatever who cares you know who again i'm not I, there's no order right this podcast is gonna this episode is gonna be about no structure the the art of no structure and how you can succeed how about that take that fucking uh smart people all right um what else is going on in the news today there's no news interesting fucking warm day in boston it was like almost 70 degrees which is very very alarming and also nice at the same time because it is in the middle of december so you know i always question people who question global warming you know it's it's like just just tell them this is it normal to have a 70 degree day in december just ask them that and if they're like, well, you know, see, that's the problem. That's the reason wrong with America right there. <laughs> when people still just like they see it and it's in front of them, it's exactly what it is. And they're just, ah, well, you know, I don't, you know, what did the equator move up? You know, did the equator move up north a little bit? That's probably why, you know, so I, don't, I fucking, I just don't know, man. But, um, but I mean, we're going to get into all these things. Um, we're going to get into all these things and, uh, have a little chat today. Uh, I'm feeling relaxed. So, you know, 
we'll see we'll see how this goes hope everybody had a good week and you're getting after it as you should um because you know we're not there's uh i don't know i don't know what i'm saying you know what i probably did i i worked out so hard today i got fucked up and i s- smoked a joint before getting on this podcast and everything that i want to say is in my head but it's not coming out of my mouth if that makes sense so the 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 the, the rpms in my mind and and my you know what chase you're digging yourself more and more in a hole and you don't have to. All right. Just stop while you're ahead. Which I need to listen to myself more. Um, I just, I just, I want to talk about something a little later on the, on, on the podcast, something that's been bothering me. But, you know, before I do, um, I, you know, we relocated um, the podcast studio for this episode um, we were recording at, uh, you know, um, WFN Studios per back uh, the back room of uh, my apartment of a corner. Um, and today, um, without knowing, uh, I invited a man into my bedroom. And uh, that's where we currently are recording this episode. I'd never had a man in my bedroom before. Um, you know, uh, I just uh, this is new. Um, I know he didn't expect this, um, so this is going to be interesting to hear what he has to say. Um, I did tidy up a little bit before he entered because uh, it was last minute we had to record in here. Um, I sprayed some Febreze before he entered. I thought that was the respectful thing to do. Um, uh, I mean, the room is 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 tidy-ish, um, but again, he's gonna he's gonna probably. Uh, allude to what he sees and maybe some things that i need to to work on so nikki neighborhoods in the building hey everyone cut to the chase podcast i um it's interesting i haven't been in another man's room in a in a long time probably since i've had a roommate and even when i had a roommate i didn't like to go into his room never ever never i never i've had roommates for as long as i can remember sure i i i just never occurs to me to go into another man's bedroom unless you know for whatever reason i need to get something that he has in mind or vice versa or or whatever but just to say you know just to go into another man's room i just that's i'm not i don't do that son i do the old school i do like the 90s high school jock like arm up on the door frame Mm. i don't go in so i'll do like the arm up on the door frame and kind of lean in yeah and do that and have a conversation. Yep. Uh, but yeah, never entering. But I have to say, just kind of looking around, for a single guy, for a single comedian. Talk to me nice. This is probably the best possible situation you can wow. walk into. Wow, didn't expect that. That's a, I worked yeah. out and a compliment. Wow, this yeah. is good. Two no, for two. I'm impressed. I'm impressed between the the candles, um, you know, the, 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 the Louis Vuitton uh, dop kit. Wow. By the bed, he peeped that, and then the um, didn't do that on purpose. By and the way, and I have to say, uh, the provocative but tasteful art on the wall, I'm I'm impressed. We call that art. Yeah, that's it's impressive. Mm. How would you describe that piece of uh, artwork there? How would- um, well, there's a lot going on. Okay, there's a woman, and she's in. It looks like lingerie. There's a, there's a map of Brooklyn and Queens. The mm. transit system, which I which I kind of like to look at more than the woman for some reason, it just seems more interesting. <laughs> yeah, um, you like information. You're an information. Yeah, guy. I'm a map guy. I like to know kind of what's what's what and where everything is. I gotta say, I'm impressed. I see a first. Re- I see a first Republic coffee mug. You know what that's about. <laughs> that's. You know what that's that, about. That is next level. Yeah. That's. That's some that's some waspy shit. Mm. That's mm. that with like if you were to just like pull out a Patagonia vest <laughs> and like blue jeans, but you know like blue jeans that aren't blue, they're like that like faded. Yeah, I'd be like, oh yeah. shit. Yeah, it's the it's uh it's the it's I I call it the like the the low tide color. Um, yeah, you know, off the banks of uh, Walston Beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That color. Yeah. Yep. Nahant. It's like Nahant blue. Yep. 
Uh, Swamp Scott Blue. Maybe? Yeah, you could get a job at State Street with that with just that if you just walked into the office. Yeah, very laid back. Very yeah, that's the type of mug. If I was work, if I was trying to get a job in finance, they would yeah. give it to me right away. New Re- First Republic Bank is a, is one of those places that you just when people walk out of it, you go, okay, they, this is not their first rodeo. Yeah, they got some coin. Yeah, because you initially had questions, like you had your go to, you had your go to selling points, right? Yeah. For for normal people. Yeah. When a guy or a gal, we got to be equal. Sure. On this podcast. Sure. Um, if a guy or a gal comes into a bank another bank with a first republic bank thermo mm-hmm. oh which that is yeah um you can't you can't uh you can't you can't go around this them serious yeah yeah they know what's up it's a statement piece it's a statement piece yeah it's up there with an umbrella i have swag. the umbrella actually behind you. yep okay yep. So, yeah oh yeah there it is the green one. Oh, the green one yeah 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 yep. so it's a swag it's a swag item i like when people have the right the right thermoses, um, you know, umbrellas, uh, and maybe a vest, maybe a vest. If you had a, if you had a first Republic vest, I think that would be kind of okay. those three for me. Other mm. than that, I'm not going to, I don't like swag. Okay. I don't like if people are giving out shit with logos on it. I, I, those are the three things. Yeah. Cause they're, they're functional. Yeah. Logos. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Very, uh, I like simplistic logos, you know, something that's not over the top, but, I mean, a bald eagle is pretty, it's as legit as you're going to get. America. That's what that mug says, is that, America. It's America. Yep. When I when I drink anything out of that mug, I am conquering America. Yeah. Flying yeah. flying over America. I'm, I'm, I'm getting after America. America's uh, taking me on a ride. I have mobile, you're saying, you're saying a couple things. I have mobile banking. I don't use it. Mm. But I have it. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't drink coffee. I drink tea. Mm. Could put coffee in there, but that that does say that that could be a tea mug. Yeah, it could, it's 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 universal. That yeah. m- that mug is definitely universal for sure. Um, when I when I think of a person also who has that type of mug, you know that they have clean countertops. Oh yeah. There's yep. nothing. They're 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 not they're not they don't like a lot of shit. No, no, no. There's no stickers on their refrigerator. No. Someone that has a First Republic coffee mug has there it's a stainless steel Viking or mm-hmm. Samsung refrigerator with nothing else on it. There's clean. Nothing. Yeah. Refrigerator's pretty much empty aside from the fact of water, a lemon, Corona bottle. Yeah. Um you know, maybe Some old white wine. Yeah. Hummus. Yeah. 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 Right. Not that much stuff in the fridge. They, um, they're on the go. Um, time is money and they pay for conveniency. Yeah. That's what, that's those people who rock those mugs. That's what they are. About. Yes. Yep. So, yep. um, I appreciate you noticing that because I'm trying to elevate, you know, me very well at this point. I think everything I see, I see everything. I'm looking at everything. <laughs> I'm trying to take in as much as I can. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. What's the lotion situation like? Lotion, well, it's three kinds. So I, I like I like I like how you segued into that. And okay. Thank, thank you for asking. I was waiting for you to. I thought you were gonna say that first, but whatever. No one's perfect. Mm. Um. Cocoa. That's co- obviously cocoa butter. Okay. The hat. I you, didn't want to jump to any conclusions, but that's to me is like, kind of your baseline. I feel like lotion. Okay. Um. So we have we have a cocoa butter lotion type. Um. We have a. Um, bed bath and body lotion olive lotion mm-hmm. yep okay a little different mix it up yep um the cocoa butter is the is the is the is the moisturizer one that that's the one that's going to last you mm. pretty much all day okay. okay the olive one is the one right before i go to bed oh okay that's to mm-hmm. you know kind of settle it down you know after you're done cleaning the countertops and not eating anything out of yeah. the fridge. Yeah. You got to have like a, yeah. So it's got vitamin E in it, which is good. Alloy. Ooh. Yeah. Whew. Aloe vera. Oh, yeah. Okay. Alloy is different than al- aloe. Sure. I think alloy is a metal. Ah, there could be alloy in you're it. Right. Though. You're right. You're right. I got to write that down. Alloy. Alloy. What is it? No, I aloe. Aloe. Aloe vera. Aloe vera. Aloe is the plant. Aloe, aloe. leaf. Aloe mm. leaf. 
Um, Alloy. Yeah. Vera, I don't know who she is, but then... Vita Vera. I know Vita Guerra. Yep. And then and then Alloy is what's in... Uh, yeah. um, it's green. What's it called? What do you, uh, d- uh, deodorant. Did Alloy? You, you want to get the one... Yeah, you want to get the one without aluminum in it. I never knew that. Yeah. I, I'm an Old Spice deodorant dude. Int- okay. Yeah. Classic. Oh, classic. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a sport currently because... Uh, they ran out, so I got the original. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm a I'm a Old Spice sport dude. Do you do the is it the white or is it the clear? No, no white powder. No clear. Clear, yeah. I, I can't do white powder. That yep. if you, I feel like dudes that still rock white powder deodorant, they either watch Die Hard, two, the Christmas one every year. <laughs> Um, or, um, yeah, they, and they still have their old, uh, white beaters like yeah, from, yeah. yeah. So they don't like they have like college. Yeah. So gotta come up, you gotta, you gotta kind of speed up with the times, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And I feel like the sport deodorant is a little bit more, it's more soothing. It's more of like a, like a soothing type of thing of application, I should say, you know, I like the smell of it. I like sport. I like ocean breezes. You know, natural. You like the natural sense. I like the natural sense. Yeah, I talk about this a lot. I'm into scents. I'm a scent dude. Mm-hmm. I'm a scent. I'm a you know when you come into a room, if the scent is right, mm-hmm. we've talked about this before. Yeah. I think the uh, you know the entrance of a lobby. What is the smell of the entrance of a hotel lobby? Smells oh. like yeah. If the entrance of a hotel lobby smells fantastic, I know I'm prepared to have a good time. Do you ever ask what a scent is? Or do All you ever try to find what a scent is? Each and every time. Yeah, you got to start doing that. Each and that. every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If oh, like, by the way, what's that? What do you guys use there? They're like, oh, well, you know, it's this. And I, you know. Patchouli. I'm like, ooh, now I have to look that up. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Real shit. I like asking people what this if it's a If it's a complex, like, if it's something where I'm like, oh, that's, uh, that's, that's different. That's a, <laughs> that's a complex. There's a lot of complexity in that smell. Yeah, yeah, I like I like, like those. What is that? And yeah. then there's then there's all these plants and seeds and stuff that I don't know, and I'll look them up, and that's what my fucking life is at this point. Patchouli oil. Patchouli oil. Yeah, I'm big on scents, man. I'm big. I don't like, I don't like, I don't like, I don't like odor. You know, I don't like. Can't do it. I just can't do it, man. Don't have patience for it. It's like a loud. Go ahead. Yeah, it's just I just it something registers in my mind when I walk into a place. First of all, I want to let I want to let I want to let people let me figure it out. I want to let people know. Thank you. Um that I think I forgot. Fuck. <laughs> Yep. Bro, I think what sense literally is just, I forgot. It's it's the same as any sort of it's it's the same as if like the five senses. Like if I walk in, it's just three for me. It's it's the light, the sound, and the smell. You can't if you can't regulate those three things, it's gonna be tough. And this is like if anyone is like single and like or just started dating someone, get those three out of the way up top when you first start seeing someone. Are they someone that when you walk into the room the overhead lights on and it's and it's like being interrogated because that needs to change yeah soft lighting i'm a big i'm a big um i'm a dimmer dude yeah i'm a dimmer dude yeah, you know i'm a dimmer that. hashtag dimmer dude yep merch yep merch up there let's write that down hashtag dimmer dude okay yep. dim it's all about the dim lighting dim lighting, lighting is everything Lighting is everything. Shading, lighting, you know. Also, the, the you know the music score with lighting. You know, the, the, oh, that's the that's the second one. Yep. That's so it goes the lighting. The actually no, it goes music first. Actually no, it goes clean apartment first. Scent. See, see I think scent is first. Yes. The well, moment you walk in, it's yeah. You catch the scent because you smell it before yeah. you see it. Yeah. So it's the scent. Yeah. Then it goes the 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 apartment clean. Mm-hmm. Then it's the lighting that matches. The, and it, then it's the. Let me okay. You, you know hit what? the order. You got it right. I got, you got order. my order right. Yeah, yeah. So my order is the scent, right? Then you see. Then you have the lighting, right? Then you have the music that matches that co that matches with the lighting. 
and the apartment, which is pretty much, you know, the last, you know, panty dropper right there. <sighs> yeah. yeah. The music has to match the lighting, you know, it just has to. I go with, it depends, you know, on a Friday night, my Friday night music is different from my Saturday night music, son. Got to have playlists. It's just different. Friday Friday nights is more of like a chill, like vibey, you know, uh, music list. You know, yeah. I'm going, obviously I'm going old school 90s, but, you know, we're going to go a little probably... My outgoing music change is different from the incoming music back from the club. The, mm. the the coming back from the club, if I have a girl coming back to the to the place, is not going to be the same of me going out. Coming back is going to be like it's going to be like Maxwell. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's a little Maxwell. Yep. Music Soul Child. Yeah. Because when yep. she comes in, I need to set the tone of comfort, mm-hmm. and then from there we have a drink. And if we speed up the music. That's where we, and then that's that's where it takes that's, off. Yeah, but once you come in, you gotta. What's the pregame? Pregame? Oh, you gotta go hip hop. Gotta go yeah. hip hop. DMX, you know, some DMX, um, Fifty Cent, um, you know, the classics, man. This is now if you have Jay Z mixed company, or if it's just you and your buddy or somebody else. Like I, for me, it's different. If I if it's just me and all of my buddies, and we're about to go out. Then that, then it's a lot of that, it's a lot of upbeat, hip hop, yeah, rock, spring, little Springsteen. I'll throw a little Springsteen in there. Yep, never did that, but um, maybe I'll try. I don't know. It'll get you. You just all you need is one Springsteen. That's it. More than one, it becomes a different thing. You're at a garage. You're yeah. at a Napa Auto Parts. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> throw a little Springsteen in there. If I if I choose to, I'll probably throw on Springsteen on the nights I choose to wear denim. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. So if the, sure. if I have a denim outfit or a denim thing I'm wearing, I'm gonna put uh, rock and roll Throw music Bruce on. Yeah. yeah. I think I think I like to do if it's like a dinner thing, a little jazz, but not like corny jazz, like the classics. Yeah. Duke, uh, Chet Baker, it's things that where people are like, oh, this is kind of cool. This isn't. This is not like you yeah, know yeah, yeah. hotel hotel. You it's know, like upbeat lounge. jazzy. It's like a little contemporary up, jazz. Little right? upbeat. There's yeah. little. There's some. Yeah. You know, so and then I'll do like yeah. some indie sh- like shit that people are listening to now. I'm really a big. What do, do what do people like? What what do the people that are going to be in this room like versus what do I like? Um, that's interesting. I don't do that. You I, do what you're. What, yeah. Yeah, I do what I like. <laughs> and then. Usually when it's you, out the park because the people, the things that I like musically, a lot of people like because a lot fair. of because I only hang around with people who like the same shit that well, I it's like. A mix, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mix. Fair enough. Yeah, so that makes sense. Fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. We all like the same. You know. I think. Yeah, I think you got to put a little of your own stuff in there. Yeah, I mean, I like people going. Well, what's this song? Let me let me shazam this. So what is this? What is this? So I've never right, heard it before. Right, right, yeah, that's good too. Yeah, I get I like that a little a lot. bit of that. Yeah, I don't ask though. I just, I just shazam it because I've tend to, I've tend to um, notice that. Do you ever meet these people, the stingy um, um, playlist people who don't Ugh. want to give up the fucking playlist? Ugh. <laughs> Those people are the worst thing. Like, cause they're trying to. They, it's like you're saving something that you think is like like you think you're you're hiding it like it's from the world but it's like it's it's music it's supposed to be shared by everyone yeah but they're making it seem like it's their own thing that they created yeah which they did because they took music and put it together but it's not you don't own it yeah, they're not i don't like these <laughs> wannabe tastemakers right. it, you're not a tastemaker if you're not letting anyone else taste what you what you made I need you, to. I need, need to, to give I'm, it out. First of all, I need to have that on a bumper sticker. You're not a tastemaker like, like unless people taste unless what you yeah mean. yeah because you know well this next thing, well I'm actually gonna say that probably to the next girl that I date. Yeah. Yeah. You're not gonna taste maker unless you let me have a taste. Yep. Well, we'll see where that goes. Yeah. Probably was borderline. <laughs> um, not call you. Don't call me anymore. Probably that's probably yep. what will happen. Yeah. <laughs> There better be a playlist for that. The aftermath of what's going to happen there. Yeah, man, those tastemakers, bro, is like, because I, you know, because there's some people that they 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 know music and they know how to put music together really mm-hmm. well. And I was like, yo, send me that playlist. I have one friend. Oh, she's she's the best, but she's the worst. 
you know, she's a DJ. She's a DJ, yeah. She's a DJ. She plays music, you know. She's really, you know, really passionate about her craft, obviously, as she should. And I always, you know, try to see if I can get that little, you know, playlist that she has. Or, she, you know, she's like... And she'll be, and she'll say yeah she's she'll say she'll send it but she never sends it you know she yeah, yeah, sends yeah. it so now when she plays music I just uh, See, I just shazam it and I just and I just save it because because I, I just I'm hijack come on son what I mean you're not gonna you she put me in the corner to do that yeah you feel me like I'm a low key shazammer yeah I'm a low key shazammer because if I'm hearing it and no one else is like I'm like this is fucking great yeah. No one else is saying anything. I'm like, let me put this on my list because the more I do this, I'm gonna be like, oh, I love this song. <laughs> See what people say. Everyone's, everyone, everyone, everyone's, the- everyone. I feel like is everyone. I feel like is uh, everyone has secrets. <laughs> <laughs> the hard transition. Get yeah, everybody has secrets. Everyone wants to like you know has ha- they can they can do things you know they do things they do things right they people do things. I like the little things. The little things or the little things to me are so fascinating. Like I was telling you, I was I was flying somewhere, sitting down, and uh, I was with my wife, and I looked over, and it was this gay couple. We're at the airport, and the, the guy goes to the bathroom, and his husband. I assume they were, uh, you know. Married. I was about to say, how do you know that they're? I didn't. I, just... I, I just assumed the way that they were acting. They they they, wow. they felt married. Wow. They felt there was a level of like, ugh, you know, when you're married, it's kind of just like, okay, I love you, but just. Leave me go alone. to the fucking bathroom. I don't need to know. Of course you need. You always need to go to the bathroom whenever we sit down. So go to the bathroom. It was that element? I don't know if you could feel a little. <laughs> yeah, I felt. Yeah, I felt like <laughs> you a, felt that one kind of touch yeah, home a little bit. Yeah, you've been married a month. How long? <laughs> but, but like, but, uh, six years. But like, the guy goes to the bathroom, and the other guy, they get two breakfast burritos. Okay. And the guy looks at both burritos. Well, first question: Did they have any picante sauce on the side? I didn't get that deep. I didn't get that deep. Jesus Christ. And and nor do I want to. They didn't seem like they. It didn't seem like a, a, a thing that I wanted to get between. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not coming over to their house but for a they, party. Yeah, but they. He looks at one of the things and switches them up. No word. Yeah. That shit to me, and I was just watching, and I was just like, "That's so dark." I would never, if I'm out with my wife, I'm I'm also kind of a different level of. Petty versus versus passive. I'm very patient with certain things and other things I'll hold for the rest of my life. Mm. The food stuff, as long as it, as long as it's not bad, I don't care. I don't care if you get the bigger thing. That doesn't matter to me because I'll just go up and get another one. Okay. Or I'll just you know I'll I'll if I if I'm dissatisfied with something about food, yeah. Like if I'm out with a group and then and everyone's like being kind of like let's just get one thing in the back of my head, I'm like I'm gonna stop at Shake Shack on the way home. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. So you're a little. And so I'm like, why are you gonna switch someone else's food up like that? That's so. Do- what other things are you doing behind his back that he doesn't know about? Everything. Pause. Everything. Yeah. 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 Yep. Absolutely. I don't. <sighs> People, 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 people are capable of being sneaky. Yeah. Um, and the the illusion, the illusion that people have generally, that they trust somebody else that's not that that's not that doesn't have those capabilities, mm-hmm. is a uh, kind of remarkable to me because I always move with a sense of mm, I don't know, man. I don't really. Yeah. I used to be very, very gullible, right? Mm-hmm. I was actually voted Mr. Gullible in high school my mm-hmm. senior year. We'll, we'll talk about as I. I didn't agree with. I didn't agree with it. Sure. But my fellow constituents, it appears that they think I was gullible. You know what? They were right. Yeah. I, I was a gullible kid, right? So I've grown out of that gullible phase where I move. You know, I. You know, some people they just like they just. They have a certain energy about them or personality to them where they just kind of just trust everybody, you know, or they're yeah. just very open right away and they're telling people their whole business. And uh, it's that's like that. how I was when I first. Yeah. 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 I don't do any of that shit. Yeah. You would have hated me like not f- anymore. F- four years ago, five years ago. Yeah. I move with like over time. If you show me that you're mm-hmm. worthy of trusting, then I, I go based on that. On that ladder. You know, like so on that consistency. On that consistency, yeah. So 
And some people would look at a person like that and say, well, man, you need to open up more or, you know, you have to be a little bit more trustworthy. And it's like, no, I'm, I'm gonna, I've lived pretty much a long time, a little bit so far. And I've seen these lenses. I've only seen what they've seen. So what I've seen is what I've seen and what I observe based on what I've seen has led me to this idea that most people can't be trusted. (laughs) I think, I think, you know, I think under c- people, certain circumstances. So I think you're right. I think most people that are loud when you first meet them. Yes. I'm like, Mm-mm, nah, bro. There's something there because you're going to pull back. You're going to be one of those people where you and I are waiting at the podcast studio or you and I are waiting to go, you know, to a show or something and you get ghosted or they pull back or they do something where you're just like, that's completely, that's completely different from how they portrayed. It. Yeah. Because it's easy to be fucking loud, and that's the new thing that I'm not into. That's yeah. the new thing I'm not into. When I went, I went down to New York uh, a couple months back, yeah. um, and I was just like, the comics down there. I was like, man, it's just a different vibe down here. Everyone likes saying wild shit. Everyone loves being loud and wild, and like mm. that burns out for me after a while. That kind of burns out a little bit. Well, the thing is, it's your motor, like you. <laughs> The thing is, you're going to have to, your motor at some point is going to die out. Yeah. Not externally and more importantly, internally, in my opinion. Like it's going to, at some point, it's going to get to a point where you can't keep up that pace. Mm -hmm. And it's going to, in order to keep up that pace, where it's, if one area of it that's been utilized as that main engine to keep that going stops, where it's going to need somewhere else to go to get that energy to keep that going so where it's gonna go you don't know right yeah. so yeah the whole loud thing man and just like i just you know i've i feel like just being kind of just you know listen i'm an i, I would consider myself like an extrovert introvert i think i might have mentioned that a yeah. little bit but uh, i feel like it has to be with you know within reason and like you know that ho- I've seen people burn out, man, you know, and also burn. Not on top of that. Also, a lot of people like who are like that, from my experience, they're just full of shit, too. Yeah. They're just full of shit. Like, they're full of shit. Yeah. Like, in terms of like, all right, cool. You All right. You may, you may have a good job and you have money. Cool. Got it. You got, yep. those, you got those lines crossed, right? Because you know how to, you know, whatever. You're fall good. Into at, fall system. into a system. Fall into a system and you do good. And yeah. I get that. Cool. And if people and if you measure stuff based on those materialistic things. I could see why you would think you're doing great, but <laughs> take that take that away. It's like, man, you know, what what else do you got? <laughs> what what else do you got? You know, it's bizarre. And, and can you come back from that? Can you come back, dude? Life teaches you a lot of shit if you pay attention to it. If you pay attention, you know, if you don't pay attention, you you get burnt out, and then from there, it's like, all right, what do I do from there? Yeah. A lot of people, though, that's the thing. Everyone thinks it's commendable. Everyone thinks it's like really, oh, they're just such a wild card. They're so out there. They're so open. They don't. They're. Not, ah, that's like a defense mechanism. They're clearly. I used to, I used to do this be. all the time. Yeah, one, oh, one, one, one form. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 def- yeah. It's just you know. It's like people that always want to pay for things. Yeah. I noticed this about uh, people where it's like. Oh, I got it, friends like that. I, I got the, friends like that. They do it specifically. They doing it out of obviously part of it is obviously they're being very generous, mm-hmm. right? But I think majority of it is like they feel like they don't want to be, they don't want to ever feel like they're dominated, or they're like they want to. There's, f- there's, there's a power ship there where it's like, oh, I've, I've paid for you all these times and you, I've never asked you for anything. Yeah. There's that. It's controlling it, how people view you yeah. in that sense, in that in that situation. If we're out with a group of people and I pick up the bill, yeah. Which is great. Everyone, I let people. I pay for people's bills before. Yeah, and I have friends that paid for mine, and it's, sure. it's all good. Sure, but they, it's a self. But this is this is this is what I'm saying is I've experienced this myself where it was. I want to do this so people think I'm a good guy, and they can't say, "Oh, th- I'm controlling in this situation what what people think of me." Right. And a lot of people do that still. And a lot of people are like oh, yeah. kind of in that. And and that and that there's just different ways that people act that way. Yeah. There's just different with the d- defense mechanisms that people use to like and the loud thing like bro, anyone that's that fucking loud when you go out in like public and like a at a show or at a mic, not even in in comedy, just in general. It's yeah. 
Yeah. If you've been, if you have experience in life, you're kind of like, what's this? What the fuck's going on? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's what do you? Who did you hit on the way here? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah, man. They each, they're they're usually operating on one, just one motor. Yeah. You know, and and eventually they, you know, they will they will they will meet they will they will come to a time where they they will see that all right maybe I need to you know slow it down or whatever sure. the case may be. But hey, we all have choices, right? <laughs> and people can choose to be what they want when they want, how they want, right? So um, as long as they, you know, have clean countertops. Just as long as your place is clean. Just just have your place clean. Yeah. You know, I trust me. I I have a cleaning lady that comes every um once a month. I used once to, a month. Once a month. Yeah, once a month. Yeah, it used to be every couple of weeks, but you know it's whatever i gotta i gotta i gotta pitch in as well too right mm-hmm. so um and she cleans you know she makes sure things are tidy i'm not a bathroom cleaner dude whatsoever mm. i used to, i could clean a bathroom really well i know how to clean my mom taught me that yeah the thing is when i first i've been fortunate because when, you know, when, when my parents first immigrated here my mom's first job was being like a cleaning lady mm-hmm. for like very very like wealthy people and she would take me along to help her so mm-hmm. i learned how to clean at a very early age so i know how to clean shit but the thing is like i hate doing it <laughs> dude i you know hate there is it. some soothing p- components to it you could play a little shy day in the back you could kind of make it a thing you know you wash your dishes trust me i have a process yeah and but i bet you have a playlist for it too i do i have yeah. a cleaning playlist yeah yep yep yep, yep. and it and depends on each room has its own different music yep yeah bedrooms are different from bathroom songs there's a lot of there's a lot of hate in my heart when I'm cleaning the bathroom. <laughs> there's Metallica yeah, for sure. Yeah. Rage. There's Nirvana, Rage, Limp Bizkit maybe in there. Oh, yeah, classic. Yeah, um, yeah, man. So I just just try to be clean. I'm trying to be a little bit more organized. I know I started off by saying structure on this podcast, but I think the only thing, if anything, you need to be have in order is your fucking room and your place. Well, self basic self structure for me is essential there has to be basic self-structure uh sounds like sounds like a name of a gym that needs to be open and new and <laughs> new and basic self-structure fitness and it's like designed it's like a theme yeah it's like an army theme like basic training and yeah. everyone loves it because they're fucking rich and bored and living in suburbia you sound like a dude that like just created that as a as a gym template like fit a like fit. course and you're trying to sell it for different gyms across the country that's what it sounds dude, like there's really gyms like that across the country that's that are based on like basic training and everyone there thinks they were in the army they're like they get that's the vibe that's what you feel after you leave it's like oh, i did basic training i could probably do real basic training it's like no oh you're in newton you're off a of route nine you're not going doing basic training right it's kind of like like white dudes go to like the hood to play basketball and they go back to the <sighs> suburbs and they're like yeah i'm better now yeah okay except that one they are actually better yeah they are a little they, bit yeah yeah at least they know how to cross <laughs> yeah they- <laughs> they'll, they'll learn one thing they'll do one thing great yeah it's if it's either the, not the game but yelling and talking shit really really let good. me let me figure out let me just hone one piece of the, my game here yeah the talking shit probably is the first they probably come back knowing how to talk a lot They're of like, good oh, shit oh okay yeah yeah get her yeah that's a big expose one expose him yep expose her one. expose her yeah oh expose her is that's a different yeah <sighs> Okay, we that's were, what I grew yeah, up we on. Were I, different summer leagues then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we were <laughs> different summer <laughs> leagues. We, yeah. we were different summer leagues. I I went to a summer Definitely. league once in Lawrence, and I was just like, uh, which was just the town over from where I grew up, and I was just like, mm. man, this is. I need to, I need to just play against people that are just better. Whether or they're whether they're in Lawrence, wherever they are, so I think that was like a big part of. And it's the same with like anything else. I'm just like the people that I'm comfortable playing around are probably the wrong people. It's not going to help me grow. Like they're not going to help me uh, grow in my game and they're not going to challenge me. Yeah. There's yeah. a, there's a thing out there, right? That if you're, if you surround yourself with people that are like just content, right? Yeah. Chances are you're probably going to be content, right? You know, it's a whole, that whole thing. Um, you know, that whole friend um idea 30 30 33 30 the 33% rule I don't know if it's 33% I think it's I think a little bit more simple than that I think it's just you know tell me who your friends are I'll tell you where you're going to be yeah yeah type of thing right so yeah. um yeah so but yeah if you came into 
listen, when I started playing in the hood, like me, like I had a coach, he actually got me into prep school. Like he got mm-hmm. like me and my friend into a prep school, private prep school, full ride scholarship too. Mm-hmm. But um, my friend actually went, did great. And so we owe a lot of, man, I owe, I got to get that guy. I got to find that guy, get him on a podcast. He would be interesting to talk to. But nonetheless, he, <laughs> What we were talking, what, what the fuck were we talking about? We're talking about going to, like the hood to play. Oh, the basketball hood to play basketball, to get, right? To get better. So yeah, so he would take. Uh, I was eighth grade, right? Mm-hmm. And he would take me from the suburbs, me and my friend, take us into Boston. Okay. Yeah. Into um, Madison Park High School, mm-hmm. right? Which is in Roxbury, mm-hmm. and there would be a league called BNBL, right? The Boston yep. Neighborhood Basketball League, yep. right? In which back then was a huge fucking summer league mm-hmm. which is comprised of like, like all the city ta- like the city you know it's like them BABC like there was another there was another like yeah Leo Papil like, B-A-B- or whatever it was yeah 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 you know Leo okay yeah, yeah so um, I played I, oh, I wasn't great but yeah so uh, yeah so you had your each person had their own each coach would form their own teams and we'd, each, mm-hmm. the cities would play the different cities and shit so when I saw playing down there it was like when I came back it to this, you know to my high school it was like it was night, like night and day that's why i played varsity as a freshman you know i was i was yeah. in, you know jv as a freshman and played varsity rest. like i never seen freshman in my life i always played varsity yeah so and i'm not like dude i'm like you know whatever but it's just it was just like i mean despite my voice i'm not that tall <laughs> so, yeah, just, despite my voice i am i am fairly tall yes so <laughs> just want to make sure people understand here. There's a there's a size difference for sure. Yeah. Um, but you know, just will, you know That's the thing. It's, it's like, will like it was, there's a different like it's it's it, I'm, what I'm saying it hasn't has not been said before, you know. And people every time like I don't know why people still get surprised where yeah, people who are in you know, in less fortunate situations, you know, their will is just different. It's harder. <laughs> so it's just fucking harder. This is a game. Even in the game, it's harder. Like they're not going home to a. To, I mean, presumably, they're not going home to a similar situation, and and, and they're yeah. in a situation where like, this, it's just it's a game, but it's not a game. It's not a game. Yeah. Right. So I can understand why most people who don't come from those situations don't take certain situations as serious mm-hmm. because they're like, well. It's just a game, yeah. you know, like, all right, I can, I mean, it's fine. I lose, but I still win tomorrow because I can go to my dad's boat. Yeah. You know, or like, <laughs> and or, I'm still going to college. And I'm, I'm still, still going, going to college. To yeah. Whatever. Yeah. You know, but when you don't have those like things readily available to you, um, you know, little things matter. Yeah. Basketball games matter. Yep. How you walk, how you talk matters. Mm-hmm. You know, what to say, fucking how to move in the hood matters. Like, mm-hmm. you know, the little things matter. Yeah. I've seen it. People who don't grow in certain situations, the little things doesn't matter to them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The little things matter to certain people because they don't have much things mm-hmm. to a degree. You know what I'm So, yeah. So, it's a different way of thinking. But, yeah, man, dude, I would go, dude, man, I've been to some... I've experienced some dope. I've learned so many things through basketball and through jujitsu on the courts, on the mats than any more than anything like than a school can teach me. Like, you know, like honestly, like to a degree, you know, I mean, school is great. Like I get it. Like you obviously need to educate it. You need to know numbers. You need to know math. You need to know business. Like great. I, I see. I disagree. I think I've learned more. Because I did, my parents signed me up for karate when I was a kid. Oh, and I would hate going. Oh, I would hate going. Oh. But it the was whole the whole karate thing, right? Wasn't that the that the big thing? There was like a thing, right? Uh, there was a, there was yeah. a boom, right? Like yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. did karate, right? In like the kempo. This, this I was a kempo was, kid. Oh, kempo, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was a kempo. They were all like, it's it's with an N, not an M. And I'm like, what does it matter? Yeah, yeah. It's it was like one kind of the kempo school that was run. It was like run on the corner from my house. It was run by him and his wife. Yeah, and. I, I never saw like a certificate from him. Like I, I don't know. Like there was no. That's the <laughs> not even not even Mr. Miyagi was a picture on the wall. There yeah. was nothing like yep. that, that would say to me like he didn't walk. Like actually, to think about it, I don't think he ever did any martial arts. That's hysterical. To think back on it, because it just I've never seen him kick. He <laughs> like I've never seen him. 
He never, he never demonstrated any of the shit. The only thing that he would do would have classes all the time, and he would like monitor the kids, show them a couple moves, and then he would have numerous, numerous of WWF parties. That's like, fucking awesome. So we didn't give a fuck if he knew how to kick. He was throwing free pizza parties for WWF, like Survivor Series, yeah. like Royal Rumbles. Yeah. When you're 11 and 12, that's what you know. that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. By the way, you're you're a, you're a black belt. Chase. Was this in an office building? Was this in a, some dude's house? What how what was the set? What there was, was three businesses Strip right mall? right right next to each other. One was a liquor store. Okay. One was a West Caribbean supermarket. Oh. And his Kempo Karate School. Okay. Uh, one stop shopping. Yeah, I love classic strip mall karate places where you go in and you're like, okay, pizza place, liquor store, karate, Kempo Karate. Yep. This place that I went to was fucking aggressive. The people there were aggressive. It was the husband and what Callahan's Kempo Karate in Bedford, Massachusetts. Jesus. There were mirrors, fucking floor to ceiling mirrors. Shout out to Callahan. Can we get them on a sponsor? Yeah. Reach I out mean, to them. who knows if they're still around, but mm -hmm. it was get the husband and wife. It was the husband and wife. Callahan's Kempo Then they Karate. had like two understudies it was always like two intense motherfuckers that weren't related to the owners but they just they bought they, into it they they're it. bought into it this was what's saving their life like it's uh, there's always all joking people. aside there's always like yep. okay that's pretty inspirational but also you need to chill the fuck out because i'm 11 years old yep, <laughs> the, yep. and so they were we for real all that shit i did it for like four years three four years whatever it was and i hated going until i got there and it was the best. It's the best I ever did in school. It was the best I ever did. You know, like yeah. it's just such a good discipline. And I think that's why so many adults are doing it. Yeah, because it's a great workout. Teaches you discipline. It also teaches you that when you look at someone like, look, you and I, like I'm probably I got what like five inches on you, six inches on you. Wow. Didn't that mean pause? You can. You can. We Clip can. That. You know that. Yeah, Clip that. That's. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Bro, I never thought in a million years I would be in your bedroom saying those words. I, Bizarre. It's it's. It I, takes on a whole new tone now. Yeah. But what I was trying to say is you got the it, floor. It, I don't it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't matter in karate. You learn very quickly that it doesn't matter who's bigger or smaller than you. Yeah. You'll get put on your ass very quickly. Hell yeah! It's wild, especially in jujitsu. What you're doing? Yeah, it's yeah. martial arts. Yeah, it's a whole, <laughs> it is. You're bodied. You're, you're legit body. Yeah, you're putting. You're pretty much telling yourself and in people like you're you're voluntarily putting yourself through pain. Yeah. You're showing up knowing that you're gonna be hurt. You you you're gonna you're gonna get hurt at some point. You you're inflicting hurt. You're taking hurt. So what? Time, yeah, that's the thing. That <laughs> these are people who volunteer. Forget about me. I'm like, I I. A beginner, mm -hmm. right? A but, novice. Right. But even as a beginner, I know a lot more than the average person, right? Yeah. Now take me. Now take a professional UFC fighter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that's probably has 30 fights under his belt. You know, whatever. You know, like, take a guy like, um, oh, yeah, perfect example. Um, Khabib Nurmagomedov, right? He recently retired. From Dagestan, killer beast. 155 beast. You know, probably can fight at 170, but he fights at 155. Um, never lost, never lost a round Ugh. in his 30 fights. Okay, yeah, that's right. He never lost a round, so they say, right? And he's he he was wrestling bears for practice. Yeah. This is what I'm trying to tell you. There's people out there that. Their will and desire to not quit outweighs anything else yeah. in the world. <laughs> it doesn't matter, it's right? Wild. It's like that's what I'm trying to tell you. the The mindset of someone who's willing to be beaten up and go back the next day and say, "I'm going to do it more." So <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> it's, 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 what are you, like, what are you going to do? It's insane. Some of the guys in the gym that you work out in, I, I bet too. Like some of those guys, maybe go on to bigger things. Maybe some don't, but they're still there. They're still showing up, and they're still. Oh yeah, just yeah. There's levels. Growing to, him. Yeah, I mean, there's levels to. I mean, but this is what I'm saying. Even like a a, a local um, pro fighter, right? Mm -hmm. They got the car, but they're doing the local circuit. You know, they maybe they're not like like you said, they're not on the main stages of like whatever, right? The prime time, the the cremes. 
but they can still kick your ass. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's what like the fuck NBA. You think? There's people that's like, well, you're not like this. There's people. Oh yeah, you, oh you didn't make the UFC, or are you, so you're they not. I'm like, are you, you fucking down. out your mind? It's like, dude, it's like <laughs> Brian Scalabrini on the Celtics when he was playing. Brian Scalabrini on the Celtics plays basketball against up and coming. Yeah, he, he did I this whole thing clip. where he's it's a, just your average rec league player. Yeah, your high school player, and then your Division, some dude that played. Yeah. I actually played against that guy, uh, Thomas Thomasuski. Matt mm-hmm. Tomaszewski played at Syracuse and a, divi- a legit Division One. Yeah, probably played some Euro, Euro ball, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it was good. And he smoked all three of them badly. Yeah, after he retired. D- yeah, actually, it was after he retired. <laughs> yeah, that's and what I'm he, saying. He was so he's yeah. not even in, in 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 basketball shape. He said to them, "I'm closer <laughs> to LeBron than I am to you." Yeah, and it's just like it, it, you'll get you'll get washed even by the 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 l- lowest level yeah. last person on the roster for the worst team. I was telling, I was having a conversation um, about this is why I think people need to you know I I, I gotta stop saying this is what people need to I gotta stop phrasing that I think this is I feel like what what we should understand is that the athletes now like. I played. I was fortunate to play in an era of high school basketball that was fantastic, right? Yeah. Would you play in the not late late nineties? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So I played in late nineties. So it was like ninety five, ninety nine. Oh. High school basketball coming out of Massachusetts, like, was probably like, I would say from like ninety three to like two thousand two. It was a good ten year run of high school basketball for Massachusetts. They're monsters, like ridiculously. Ninety five like. to ninety nine in basketball, just in the world. That alone was crazy. That is because you're you're playing when Jordan is actually playing. Yeah, we're playing in yeah. his prime. Yeah, I watched Jordan ever since. I oh was. my god! And also other other players like that's the thing too. During that time, it's like some of those other players too were just so fucking good. Yeah, my I had a cousin. My cut like you know he's he was nice. He won a state change state championship with East Boston. Yeah, and he like he had a shot at the like the buzzer for them yeah. to go to like. High school basketball was different. People like people wanted to play and stay with the school that they were in. Yeah. Like if you were from like East Boston, you played East. You wanted to play against Mission yeah. Hill, you know. And these are like cities that are like you know in Boston. You know, high school players stayed in their high school. Sure. Unless they were like prep schools was kind of in at the time, but not so much. They were only yep. like for like the real top tier ones. Yep. They would like they knew they you know, but but there wasn't that many prep schools like. Being, they were still around, but they weren't around. They were starting to form. That transition to when I was in high school, which was like oh four to oh, yeah, I would or, think like oh, after oh, two, oh, yeah six. around that, that's when I think I started to like prep schools really yeah. start to go. But high school public basketball, <laughs> try yeah. making your high school because everyone wanted to play for the high school basketball team. Yeah, so everyone that's what I'm trying to tell people. I tell my friends like I mean my friend Randy he always like because I still live in like Al Bundy moments you know because yeah. like when I was in high school I did this and I was like I didn't do shit yeah. whatever but yeah, <laughs> so I was just around I the enough. people Good. Yeah. I was just around the people that were getting scholarships going to the open gyms yeah. and just being like oh, okay this is how things work yeah well I went from like a school that was like I was starting point guard yeah. to a college where I, I walked on <laughs> okay yeah same so I'm saying so it's like but I could have like but whatever but we had to fucking we had monsters in my in my college, right? Well, like, that's why you're able to walk on. We had like monsters like that were supposed to go to D1, but they couldn't. Like they, yeah, could, they, okay. they didn't have the grades. Let's talk about this. Well, I want to get back to what you're saying. Yeah. But the comparison rolls into this, which is the D3 schools. Because I went to a, a D3 school in Cambridge, yeah. And there were dudes that p- probably played in the same league. In fact, I know there were dudes who. Where'd you go to school, in Cambridge? Again? Uh, Did you tell college? Me? No, where'd you go to high school? Oh, what, what you said high oh, school? Oh, I went Cambridge? to high school up in up oh. in the North Shore. Oh, you said D three. Co- what did you say? D3, Cambridge. D three college in Cambridge. Oh, Cambridge. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they had most of the dudes that were coming from, um, O'Brien, um, uh, like Roxbury High, like Dorchester High, and so yeah. like those were those kids were in that like in that league that you were talking about. Mm. Then after as I was kind of like going through that, I was just hearing more stories about like AAU and like how that's becoming. It was getting to a point where like I was just kind of following it more, but I think that's what changed too, like from when you were in school to then the yeah. early 2000s is like, why the fuck would I play for East Boston when I could go play in this AAU team and go down to Peach Jam in Atlanta yeah. and play against OJ Mayo. Sure. You know, and, and like try yeah. my luck against these guys well, that are going my, to the league. Yeah, well, the, re, the yeah, so <laughs> listen, I, I, I'm i going to have like, there's going to be an episode because I'm going to, like, I'm 
planning on having like a lot of sports guests on and stuff like that. Yeah. So like sports is going to be a big part of this podcast sure. to a degree. So, but yeah, it was totally different back then, you know, that, that but what my point was when I brought up the high school versus now, I played in a great era of high school basketball. And then what ha- I think now it's totally different because the high school kids now they can, ch- they can play in it at like the NBA, the athletic ability of these high school kids now is so fucking much different than when I was playing. There were probably a few kids that could dunk in high school. And when they did dunk, you knew about it. And yeah. they were like the anomaly. It was a big deal. It was a big deal. Yeah. You got 16-year-old kids now going between the legs and warm-up lines in fucking sophomore high school. I said, are you freaking kidding me right now? It's evolved. You know, humans evolve over time. You're absolutely right. The reason that kids can do that now is because they're not getting taken out by the by the knees in middle school or high school or wherever they are because it's a, it's a less physical game. Well, yeah. Well, even regardless of the, the physicality of the game itself – the, I'm just talking about just pure athletic, athletic ability. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. It's like, crazy. It's it's these kids are doing. I'm watching a kid, Zion Williamson in his sophomore year was. That, fu- that's a different dude. I played against like fucking dudes that can dunk like that. Yeah. Like rarely when like few kids like you know what I mean. There was I mean there was like high school phenoms that back when I was like playing there was like. High school phenoms like Shea Carton was another one. He was from Cali. He was like fucking a beast. He was like a small LeBron dude. Mm. Yeah, he was like six five, like two twenty, built like a brick house. Crossover. He yeah. was a man amongst kids. Yeah, right? ever since he was a freshman. Um, Ronnie Fields. I've uh, heard that. Yeah, 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 from Chicago, played with Kevin Garnett. He had yep. ho- Felipe Lopez. There's yep. like a, a lot of high school basketball like yeah. back in those days. But now there's like. I'm looking at these highlights, man. Ever since like Zion and ever since, even a little bit before, I'm like, oh, I know what it is. They're getting trainers and like when they're like 10 years old. Yeah. They're getting like real like pro, you know, it's seasoned tr- it's, it's tr- athletic trainers and they train. And by the time they're 14, 15, they got the fundamentals down. The the muscle fibers have been built up and now they're just going into their height and now they're coming in fucking it's exposure they're crazy. getting exposed to oh after the game i have to go in an ice bath or i have to go to cryo or i have to do yeah you know stim therapy and like the schools want to win so they're getting some of the schools want to win so they can afford to get some of the shit that helps you recover recovery is like completely different in the early 2000s well yeah. now well when you're 13 you don't really need that much recovery when you're 13 14 no, 15 you, you so fucking get a hood ice cream and a, yeah. and a gatorade and it's like the yeah. amount of sugar that you're drinking after a game it's like insane it's crazy. back then yeah but now it's like yeah these kids like there's just so much out there there's so much access they can look at the way that nba players are training the rehab the gear the gear now has never there's never been more sh- gear for kids to wear mm. to be comfortable and to play and to the, the sleeves and the shoes and the oh yeah i mean there's like, you got that shit too you got like i'm again i'm just going to pure like just pure evolution, evolution of like it's fucking wild. these these the you know I just I, mean, I just was I'm just like where it's gonna go because yeah. <laughs> you know you got guys that are jumping out the woodwork putting between the le- in between in warm up lines you're yeah. you're 16 like what do you get a technical foul for doing that see so you're this is the thing with you wrong league I was in the wrong league. yeah you you're one you probably was on the board with the NFL. That ruled against celebration. The way you said that, because say- <laughs> the fucking you, 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 you know, you just you, you probably were on the I committee that was against. Mug. I would walk in with this first Republic mug to Roger Goodell's conference table and just sit down and go, "Look, before we get started, we gotta do something about these celebrations. People are having too much fun. Terrible. It's too much fun. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. I don't know, man. <clears throat> um, but yeah." I'm yeah, high school sports was fun. Yeah, it's a different feeling now. I feel. I, I mean, I haven't been to a high school game. In, I don't even remember yeah. the last time I went to a high school. I go game. to one. Uh, there's a one that I go to. I mean, actually, <clears throat> I sometimes go to my high school one. Sometimes oh, okay. just stop in, <clears throat> you know, just kind of see if people yeah. still remember. And, and I'll be honest with you, not even that. I just want people. Sometimes I just want to see if I can still get in for free. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I'm the kid. I'm the you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I still go back to my high school auditorium basketball games to see if I can still get in for free. I would. Yeah, you guys don't do that. Yeah, just tell me different. I would get kicked out. 
<laughs> oh, you're that bad. I'm the least. The my high school. I'm probably the least memorable person that yes, in high school, but yes. I think like I. Dude, the way I talk about how I was like in basketball, like I, you would think, uh, you know, like they had like fucking, you know, a statue in front of my high school. Yeah. Like my, like people, like yeah, dude, like, like we, we lost every game. When you, <laughs> you like, you, we were, yeah, we had all these powerhouses. We, you know, we played against Cambridge Ringe and Lion. It's like you getting the ball stolen. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's like yeah. we. They made another statue of the person from East Boston stealing the ball from you. Can I fucking tell you a real thing that happened to me two weeks ago? Please do. I'm in Central Square, going to you know going somewhere. Yeah. I get off the stop. A homeless dude who I was just looking at me. I know he's homeless because I've seen him in Central Square before. Sure. And he had a really really recognizable face, but I couldn't picture it where where I knew him from. The the, the homeless uh, people in Cambridge are just more memorable. I feel like. Dude. He comes out to me. He goes, hey, man, you remember me? Oh, oh shit. Nah, man, not really, man. He's like, yo, Somerville High, I dropped 45 points on you. Fuck. Fucking. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want? What can I get you? Yep. I bought him a fucking, I bought him McDonald's. Yeah. You have to. How the fuck I can't buy the... Because he'll drop this, 45 on you This again. dude dropped 45 points on me. Like, and now he's homeless. Yeah. And I'm going to look at him fucking different? No. He could still ice you if he wanted to. Did he look... Was he in shape? Shape. Yeah. Shape. A little dirty, but shape. Well, yeah. We're not, we're not, here, to ju- we're not here to judge that. It's just... Okay. Yeah, the, the, the home, homeless in shape is like that's a good story. A different, yeah. He, he, I remember the kid. And when he, as soon as he said it, I'm like, "Fuck!" And you know what I literally said right after he said that? I was like, "Listen, man, it was, it was like we played zone." It was the past. It was the past. That we we played, yeah, zone. we played zone. Don't you know? I, I literally played. went to defense back. I was like, "It was zone." He just, he's like, "No, it wasn't. It was a diamond. It was a diamond and one." I was like, yeah. "Fuck, he's right." Yeah, you're like, "Yeah, it was actually more intricate than zone." It was more intricate. Yeah, I was actually guarding you. Remember when zone was like, "Oh, we're gonna shut these people down with zone." Yeah, this whole team's gonna get shut down with a good zone defense. Yeah, and there was always that one like really white kid who played the wing that you had to yeah. play it for. Mm-hmm. Yep, we had the, we had a play. White three men on the wings were huge. Cause they're probably like playing lacrosse too in high school, or they cross have country, some, yeah, something. And they're Cardio. just like this motherfucker is gonna get CTE yep. by the time he's nineteen for sure, because <laughs> he's going at it. Yeah, there was we had some battles, man. In high school, man, yeah. we played some fucking. Key. Man, I have a whole list of guys that I've met, and 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 seen and played with, that I'm gonna get on the podcast and we're gonna go back. And we're gonna remember these dudes. Relive the games. You really well, not well, all the experiences so much. Yeah, it relive the yeah, yeah. I would say some of the games, but more of like the experience because I'm just, <laughs> I just, it was mind boggling being a freshman and watching these like, just watching people be greater at what you like to do. Yeah, that was something that I always enjoyed. I always put myself in positions where people were better than me. Yep. Like I always want, like, I, and then and watching and learning. Like yeah. I, I just I purposely put myself. In. If you got called on the court, the, there, there was always two full courts going on. Yeah. There was a court where the really good guys were playing, and the ones that weren't really so good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then when you were on the one that's not so good, you're like, I'm gonna be the best motherfucker oh, on this court, and they're if, gonna and they're gonna see why I need to be on the. If you're if you're a young guy, if you're a young bull trying to get on the, if you get picked, yeah, on the good court, oh, you it's you, it's better your time to shine. Yep. Yeah, because you get that respect. Yeah, from the older G, you know, the respect from the old G's were like it was a thing. If you are ever in a rec league game, anyone right now, the the easiest way to run with people above your skill set is just hit open shots. That's all I did. That's literally my the. I was. I thought I was gonna. I thought I was going to the NBA. That's how delusional I was. If you hit three shots in a game, (sighs) game up to eleven. Let's just say you hit three. Yeah. But if one of the one of the shots is like a game winner. Yep. You're you're picked. You you got you got yeah. You got your wings pretty much. Even if it's just like I would I would play I would I would go to these open gyms. I quit playing basketball my sophomore my junior year of, of high school. Cause I was like, I don't think I'm gonna make it. Yeah. I'm just like, I just don't think I, I just don't think I'm built for this. I'm not putting on weight. I was six three, uh, like a hundred and 
like 50 pounds. You know, you're like looking that. at someone five inches shorter than you and you're literally saying that to my face. Yeah. And so fuck you. I was in much. high school. I grew up. You're like, like I was six, inches. three. Yep. And you did, I'm like, I'm looking at you like, yeah, I wish I was six, yeah. three. <laughs> Be a much, I would much different. Story. Oh, I'd be in the league. Yeah, much be different. I'd story. be in the league. I could dunk, I'd not consistently, league. but I had the athleticism yeah. to like yeah. do things. That's why I went to go play volleyball. But All right, let me we're just, not going to get into that. Let me be honest. Okay, I keep saying I'd be in the league. Every man says that. That's what I'm saying. That's what I I'm wouldn't to be say. in the league. So I thought that. Yeah. Until I started like going to some of the gyms where like it was a dude. This dude, his name was Warren. He got he got um, recruited to play basketball at BC. He, Technically got recruited to play football, mm. but he also decided to play basketball at BC as well. Uh, took up two scholarships, all right. So, and that's a low level. Although back then, that at the time, that was like BC. It was rare, but was some actually, people did that. It was it was actually good? That was like the last couple of years that they were good. Was this late nineties? No, no, no. This no, is early, early to early to mid. That was like mid, like two thousand four to two thousand. Okay. Yeah. 2002 to 2006 is when I was in high school. 2006 to 2010 is when I was in college. So that's right around 2010 is when they stopped being good. I would say a little bit before, but yeah. Go ahead. yeah. To my point. Yeah. I would go to these open gyms. Yeah. And these are kids that are getting scholarships to Quinnipiac, UNH. Yeah. Good schools. Good schools. You know, they're yeah, not going to be on Sports Center, but they're, they're, yeah. they're playing against really AAA, great. Triple A, double A, yeah. Just hit open shots. Yeah. And those good players, those really like D1, and they, they would get so frustrated. They'd be like, it's not fucking rocket science. He just hits open shots. Just guard him. Yeah. Don't. You yeah. Know. Yeah. So just hit your open shots. You just got metaphor hit, for life. You got hit. You got to. You got to hit your shots. Know where you fit in. Yeah. Don't be fucking loud. Yeah. And just hit your open shots. Huh. It was wild. That's a. Huh. I think that's a pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good um, chart, right there. You yeah. Know? That makes sense. You said. Don't be loud. Don't be loud. What did I say? Don't I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't hit open shots. Hit open shots. Where the, was the last thing that you said? Fuck, I'm. I'm, I'm losing it. Mm. Yeah, just, just don't be loud. Know where you fit in. There it is. Know where you fit in on the court. I would. I'd hit the wings. Yeah. I'd set picks at the elbows and then drift out to the wings. Yep. And I'd hit a nice little little Mark Blount. Mark Blount. I would hit like a mm. Mark Blount, little Rodney Rogers. Wow. Uh, little just inside the three point line. So you're about you're a 15, 14 footer guy. Yeah, big time. Yeah. That's my sweet spot. Yeah. I can I can take Pause. it to the hole, but it's going to be off of a pump fake. I'm not creating the shot. I'm a set shooter. Okay. And I'll and I'll get to the hole off of a pump fake in it. All right. So you're not so so you're kind of like a. Um, I would say I was more like a Clay Thompson. I was going. Well, that's a stretch there. That might be a stretch. That's a big stretch. That's a big stretch because you know Clay Thompson shoots almost fifty percent from three point. I was like a Walter McCarty. Okay, different beige. Let's go more beige. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because I can't. It's hard for me to. I just can't. It's hard for me to equate. I I mean, I was like a Brian Scalabrini, really, realistically. Okay. Because he moved around. He knew how to hit a hit, hit, hit an open shot. The crowd I was thinking crazy. more like Ronnie Cycli because of the hair. Okay. On the arms. What a great, great reference. Okay. Ronnie Cycli, for those of you who don't know and you should, is I think the first and last player of Lebanese descent that actually impacted the NBA. Current DJ? Currently Great. a DJ. Yep. Currently a DJ. Lives in Miami, living good. <sighs> Ronnie Cycli. Yeah. I don't like jerseys. I don't support men wearing jerseys. Oh, well, I don't know how long you're going to be on this podcast because yeah. I'm a big jersey guy. But mm-hmm. if I were to get a jersey, it would be a, it would be a Ronnie Cycli. Oh, right? yeah. If you that's, were a Ronnie Cycli, I'd be like, that's... No shirt underneath. It makes... Yeah. The hair has to match the person. Yeah. So, you know... My barber got COVID, so I can't... You could go to a Dominican one. I could hook you up. They don't care about yeah. that. Yeah, you're you're like the salon. You're like a saloon guy, right? You like a to go salon. into a salon. Yeah. No, this is a barber. This is a barber, but it's a fufu barber on Newbury Street. It's not like a. He's Nigerian. <sighs> the moment I said fufu, I should have known. Just I don't know what I'm saying. Just, no, I didn't get toughed. Mm. When I, went in. I didn't get toughed when I went in. <laughs> I was talking to him the earlier. He's, yeah. I gotta do yeah, that's funny. <laughs> look up if anyone doesn't know, look up fucking Chase on on uh, comedian Godfrey's uh Instagram live 
and Chase had one of the fucking funniest. I'll let you describe it, but I was di- I was watching that live and I was dying. Yeah, yeah, it was. He's, I don't know. I gotta I gotta create something from that. I guess it's a thing, right? So it's 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 it's, it's with all it it goes across. There's a sound in every family. Yeah, every ethnicity, every kind of like um, <laughs> social thing. It's there's there's always that sound of just disgust. Of, ugh. Yeah, like that. Ugh. You just yeah, there's that. There's, yeah, I get. Yeah, that's another thing. The disrespect, the level of disrespect. See, also has another thing too. I think you know, in in conjunction with what you said about just make your shots, know your position, mm-hmm. right? I think and know, your, know your position on the floor. Don't be loud and hit your open shots. Hit your open shots, right? The other thing too is it's the other thing too i feel is just also being ready to pay to play yeah the preparation right like preparation is so important you know i'm trying to be better at that and you know part of this podcast is going to be predicated on that by because i got to commit myself every week to do this so that's going to teach me some order there i know i talked about not being order earlier well whatever but it's <laughs> I was just shaking my head in the back. I'm like, this is my Yeah. This structure's my specialty. Yeah, man. Structure's good. No, structure's good. You need it. And um Yeah, preparation's good, man. Preparation well being ready when you're when the time um gets called. You know. And I think a lot of people just don't they don't do that. You know, they just live in you know, they they you know. I went to training today. I took the truck public transportation. I got off the public transportation. I didn't have, I, I'm trying to save money on Ubers. So I'm just trying to fucking sure. like, get, get to, dude, I spent so much money on Ubers and zip cars. It's fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. So I said to myself, let me take the train. I'll take the bus to, to the gym. I asked the guy who was working, who was, part, you know, the, t, the, the transit system dude that's in that booth, right? If you're in a booth and you're in a T, I feel like you should know what the fuck's going on. Any person who's Correct. in a booth. Yeah. I feel like that's your should, office. That's your office. You are information. And you're wearing on your shirt it's the logo that's on the train yeah, or you, the bus. You know you're supposed to know about the things that you have the logo on your shirt about. I go in, I say, "Hey man, I'm trying to get to this, you know, I'm telling I'm trying to get to this place. What bus goes to that area?" He pulls out the pamphlet. He goes, "I think this one here." Uh. You think this one i miss the old school oh yeah yeah that's a 73 bus you're gonna get it right over there yep i and miss that it's the person who's from the area that lives that knows how to that's yes. been around right has a membership at the elks lodge at his local town yes <laughs> you know like i'm just saying dog yep. like yeah you know, yep. they they go to the elks lodge on a saturday night right that's what they do yep they right? hit up the sons of italy on wednesday for the two dollar beers that are warm and bingo and bingo or kino or kino yeah uh, th- those people know stuff yeah, right they really this, do this dude didn't know anything everything i tried to propose uh, any other question i was trying to he just didn't know and i didn't want it to be mean i don't want to say well what are you doing why, why are we paying you what, yeah. what do you i want to say what why are you here what is it that you yeah, do what's you your know function what's here? your function here are you like a RA in college? Because you're not able to answer any question from the information booth yeah. to the patrons and customers. Yeah. So what are we doing? That's that's actually a really good question that I think more people need to start asking because service is at an all-time low. Sorry oh, for customer so service. Shout out to sucks. service workers. I know it's tough. I know delivering delivering packages sucks. I get it. I've been there. I know, but we have to have we have to do something about this because it's just fucking bad. It's terrible. It's bad. That being said, I did have a good experience this weekend. All right. Let's, I was out with the wife. Okay. We hit up the Christmas markets. You've been? Have you ever been to a Christmas market before? No. Okay. This is something that. I don't want to make this a, just a white thing, but this is something that bored white people do. Okay. To, I don't know if it's to generate buzz around the holiday, to sell knickknacks, to do, but they love it. It's like apple orchards or like pumpkin farms. These things where people gather to drink craft beer and mm. to like get a buzz on or some shit. That's their shit. Yeah, I don't know. That's what they like to do. Yep. So my wife likes this stuff. And you know what, quite frankly, what she likes 
I have to at least at first appear to like. Nice. I have to give it a chance. G- give it a chance. I have right. to give it a chance. I have to appear to like it. Sure. I did a really great job on this trip not being negative. Because <laughs> we go to the first place. It's in Soa, which is in the south end. It's like a, kind of an artsy type of place, whatever. Right. And so it's an indoor market. Line is wrapping around the parking lot, almost out to the street. It would easily four four hundred people in line. And I'm not. I'm gonna interject one thing. I would say the time that you were here was before eleven a.m. You would think so. You would. You yes. You would think that. No, it was no. not. It was around like four, maybe. Wow. Four or five. The commitment. And it was on a Saturday, so people were, you know, about to go out. Let's go to the market, and then let's go out. To whatever, I don't even know where people go out anymore. But a sure. lot of, lot of, let's get our buzz on first, and then go out. Energy. Yeah, the pregame thing. Go to the first one. Can't do it. Got to leave. And I, I even said, hey, I'll wait in line. And then I see the line wrap around, and it's bad when my wife. The line is bad when my wife doesn't want to even wait. She'll wait in line for anything. Anything. So she's like, let's just go to the one in the seaport. So we go to the one in the seaport. Same thing. Mm. And at this point, I'm just like, okay, well, we can wait in this line if you'd like. We found a way to get in. We got in. Fucking horrific. Whatever. We leave. We walk back. We're all the way from the seaport to to uh, Beacon Hill. And I'm like, I'm hungry. You know, when you're just hungry and you just want to fucking just let's stop in somewhere. I don't care. We don't have a reservation. It's a Saturday night. Who cares? Maybe yeah. we'll go in somewhere. Yeah. Stopped into this place on Newberry Street. It's a pizza place. It's a it's a plant based pizza place. You are living the life, my friend. Listen, I thought I was. Walk in, sit down. You know what a place? You know what a restaurant's playing music that you would hear. Circling back to our conversation from earlier, you would hear like a bad high school's like layup lines. Like this high school's gonna get. They have no. But they're O and fifteen. Yep. The music is blasting, and none of it's like good. Oh yeah, yeah. The, we used to when we used to go to the, play the suburb kids, like they would play yeah. like some like now. It's like now fifteen. Yeah, or ninety eight degrees or something. 90, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, it was a lot of that shit. Yeah, loud. I don't like loud places. When we we talked about this, I don't mm-hmm. like loud places when you go and you're trying to sit down and eat. No. Go and we sit down, whatever. It's like, it's like cafe style, like mm. like those those German community big tables or whatever. Sure. Whatever. So mm-hmm. we sit down, we order, food comes out. It wasn't good. Ah. Uh, just wasn't good. So the plant-based pizza was not good. The plant-based pizza wasn't bad. It was everything else on the menu was just like, what the fuck are we doing here? I'm down with plant-based stuff because you can find like, yeah. especially if you're in a nice I'll have like a spinach pizza. Yeah. If you're in a nice part of town, it's like they probably got spinach good ingredients. Spinach and feta, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, That's plant-based, right? Yeah. Anything. Yeah. Anything yeah. like that that yeah. doesn't have meat involved in it is is essentially plant-based, I would assume. I don't know. Yeah. We're we reaching. Just, this, this is where the service, and I promise I'm going to land the plane on this story. The waiter, or excuse me, the waitress comes over and is like, how's everything going? And she looks with a concerned look on her face because she's really into it. She's been with us since we sat there. Okay. And, she's, and she's really like, it knows what we're, can feel our energy. Mm. And my wife is like, the, the food's just not good. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. It's we're not rude. Yeah, we're not rude. But she's like, I'm so I'm, the food's just not good. Yeah. Right. Can we wrap the pizza up? You can clear this stuff out. Um, it just is like wilted and like all the, whatever. So just get it this away. Wasn't hitting. And she's like, Oh my god, this specifically. Right, she, I'm gonna take care of that for you. So we're gonna take that off the bill and yeah, I'll wrap the pizza up. She goes, Is there anything that the the staff is there anything that the cooks could do? And I go, No, it's just I think the menu is put together like poorly. Mm -hmm. It's a fundamental issue, but the service is great. (laughs) Service is fantastic. Okay, we'll take it off. Boom. Mm -hmm. Solved. Yeah. How easy is it to just take it off the menu? Take it off the bill. Yeah, they look at you as if you're fucking asking to you know, asking Yeah, people when you're asking people to do the right thing, they look at you with like the most utterest distaste yeah like it's like and then they look at you they question it like as if it's like i like, wasn't i wasn't saying sorry to interrupt you i wasn't saying oh i ate all of this shit it's not on my plate anymore and this isn't good no those, those people those i people, get yeah those people are just trying to get a freebie they suck yeah so this is a situation where she i'm glad she asked because you know some 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 waiters or waitresses will be like oh, they don't give a shit. okay ready to clear this off mm-hmm yeah, I guess whatever. 
Oh, we'll get into a whole etiquette of serving at another time. Okay. Because I'm big on customer service because I've always worked in customer service capacities. Yeah. And which is hence probably the reason why I became a comedian because I know how to fucking deal with people. Sure. But, or maybe not. Uh, time will tell. But the whole customer service thing, if you're, if you're at a job and you're serving me and I'm paying money, you're going to get what you deserve. Yeah. The whole fucking 20% off the rip Nope. I see. I see. That's where I slightly disagree. Twenty percent is you just bringing the food to us. Twenty percent for me is just you bringing the food to us. You yeah. decide where we go from there. No, I'm saying twenty percent. Yeah, to get more, to get more. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, you get. Well, I think yeah, because I said twenty percent. No, you're gonna get the the ba- the 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 basic chip gratuity, sure. right? Anything more than that, it's gonna be on based on what you do. Yeah. Yes. We start at 20. Yeah. You figure out if it's going to go up or down. From there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I man. don't like these people too. Like, I don't like these people who are like, I like even people if are it's passionate re- about their fucking yes. jobs. I'm into people. And listen, I know it's hard to be passionate about a job that you hate because your the schedule sucks. Yes. You know, it's not the right job. They, they pass you on promotions. Well, you know what's funny? We have choices and you can get another job. Yes. So. With that being said, if you put a little bit of enthusiasm into the job itself, you can make it work mm. if you just look at it from a different angle. I'm tired of people just being tired of their job and taking it out on me. Yes. We're in this together. This waitress right? comes over and is like, hey, how's everything going? What can I get you guys? Sorry. ba ba ba. Like, in it. We're in it. We're in it together. We're in it, man. And she came over and could just sense the vibe. What's wrong? What's going on? Hey, hey, what's wrong here? That's how I would be if I was a waiter right now. What's yeah. what's up? What's going on here? What's wrong? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that sucks. I'm sorry. I'll take that back. Should I let them know that it sucks? No. I was like, don't even let them know. It's. I'm like, Yo, this is an. This is a. I this gave is a twenty dollar tip. I gave a twenty dollar tip to my Uber driver dropping me off the other night. That's why. Because he was a good driver. He had good conversation. He was engaged. We had, you know, and he was, he just deserved it. Yep. And he didn't, I just, the, the ride was probably like 12 bucks, 13 bucks. I gave him a 20 cash. Boom. Like, because great. I, because I've been in those situations, man. I know how it feels to be working at a job that you fucking hate, but you have to do it because there's no other choice. Right. And it feels yep. good when someone actually appreciates and recognizes your, your, um, your efforts and rewards you yep. of those efforts. And that's an important thing to me where you incentivize people by giving them something that they didn't expect. Cause now they have something to look forward to. Yeah. It helps, you in, know, in leading in with kindness. Always. I was talking to this realtor and he was, I was like, what's the one thing you're clearly very successful. What's the one thing that you have learned of all these years of, of, of being successful at real estate? He goes, everyone needs to be treated with kindness. Fuck yeah, man. Just everyone needs to be treated. Lead with in with that. Yeah. Lead in with like the, leave the stereotypes out the fucking door. Yeah. Leave your own special interests out the door. Hey, be smart, negotiate, you know, leverage, but you can do good business by being, you could do it. You, you can even create tension and friction in, in a negotiation or something like that, but you have to lead in with like, like in this situation, go, first of all, yeah, you're fantastic. Yeah. I just want to get that out of the way. Yeah. Your service has been outstanding. Yeah. This is not a me. This is not an us and you situation. Mm-hmm. This is we'll highlight the strengths first. Yep, you've there's been tech. fantastic. You, you, you do this well. You do this well. You yep. do this well. However, there's some things we also have to address that I feel like needs to be worked on, and we I would we I would like to work with them together with you. There's ways you can say it to make them not feel like they're not worth anything. Yeah, and I'm tired of people who are bosses of people or or have these like corporate hierarchies where they treat their fucking people who are really working hard like shit because they don't know how to fucking communicate with them. Mm-hmm. I'm dealing with right now. With yeah. my job, mm-hmm. it's like I, you know, there's people that work at my job. You would think that they're very like you because they at that particular location mm-hmm. and job and brand, like they have these habits in in check, mm-hmm. and they fucking don't. You know, they're just it's just like oh, you just trying to just climb the mountain, and you don't yeah. care. You're not even really listening to me. If you say hi to me, the next cut to the chase podcast I I, going. i'm going cut to the chase mm-hmm. if you are a person that says hi to me but you're not saying hi to me 
like you're not giving me oh. any facial recognition and you're on your phone looking down you are the reason that ISIS took over Afghanistan <laughs> because of people like you because, because of people they were like sick you. of being ignored and they were sick of don't ask me how my weekend was and then not take a five second pause to either comment on what I just said before going to would you mind getting this done mm-hmm I could fucking I, oh my god, and that's what you have to do. And in this situation with this waitress, I I did. By the way, you're fantastic. I like using words like that because it really drives the point home. You're outstanding. Mm-hmm. Pause. Let a compliment sit. Simmer. Please. Why are we cheapening these compliments? Let a fucking compliment sit. You're yeah. outstanding. Yeah. I've enjoyed this interaction. Yes. Now, the issue that we're having is the food is not great, and it is very expensive. Uh, and we're not going to finish it. So you can take it. Uh, and we're just going to wrap up and leave. The leaving part I've noticed, if in a bad situation, is when you know whether or not a restaurant gives a flying fuck mm-hmm. about you or about their reputation. Because mm-hmm. just the, you know, we're going to wrap this up and then we're going to leave and we're going to, this is this was not good. Oh my God, okay. Or it's like, okay. Yeah, you yeah. go ahead. Yeah. And, and you, you need to know you're going to take that hit in the right. back of your head. You're like, this is going to be. Yeah, well, restaurants have fucking shrinks that they pay. You know, they have yeah. a shrink quota. You know, they know there's going to be some losses on service level. You, you, you try to just you try to mitigate that by, you know, how you mitigate fucking, bro. You know, if you just, <laughs> you know what mitigates fucking loss, profit lot mark loss, accountability. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Accountability can mitigate, it can reduce your profit losses because some of the times if you just say, yeah, I did fuck up. I'm sorry. Like, well, you know, what, what can I do for you? Can I get a coupon? Can I get you something? Can I get, and if they're like, no, it's okay. You know, it's fine. You know, there's some people that are like that. They don't want the free shit. Yeah. They just want to let you know, like this. They was just want to be heard. They want to be heard. They want to pay for it too. And, but they want you to know to like fix this. Yeah. You know, how many of that? I don't know, but there are people like that. But I think if you lead in with the same same approach nice calm calm you know what's Warm. the issue what's the solution exit sure peacefully right yeah that's the play. you would think right you would think but that's no the play. but we fucking people we make things so much harder i mean there was someone here's the thing too there was someone next to us complaining about almost the same exact thing he didn't like how the pizza was made or some shit and um he was i think he said something to the effect of like i'll go back there and teach them a fucking thing he said fucking thing. And I'm like, oh, you're done, buddy. No, oh, wow. They're going to take something off, but they're not going to help. They're not going to take what they're not going to go where they should go. Because no. once you once you swear in a certain in in interaction that has to do with like customer service, your credibility shot. You're done. Yeah. You're up. No, you got to. Yeah, you got to be smart. You gotta save it up to the end. You got to save your. You can, well, you got to save your favors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah you got to save it up to the end. Save your favors. Because if you're not going to if it's not going to go your way, then you can. Yeah. Throw a little in there. I will say this though. I will. We will. What we will do. We should save. We should save more for another time. Sure. I think that's that would be great. Um, well, that was my story. So that was my that was my. Yeah. Kicking off the holidays. We made a good. My wife and I looked at each other at the end of that night, mm-hmm. being like, "We've had three failed attempts at doing something together this tonight, and we were <laughs> we were still positive the whole yeah, time. We didn't turn positive, on right? each other. Well, yeah, that's and, good. And it's it's not easy to do that because you get so frustrated about shit. But then you know, we're like, "What the fuck? Are we, what are we gonna be mad about?" That's what I'm saying, man. I think you. Yeah, just I think um, knowing that you can't control things. And that yeah. being comfortable with things that you don't have control over, I think is a great, it's a great characteristic to have, to just have a very like peaceful life. <laughs> because yeah. you, you know, you're not going to, or have a certain level of serenity that, that you need in order to not work. There's people that worry about everything. And I just, it, it, it's hard to, and there's a lot more now. And they're just they're just fucking worried. They have anxiety. This you know their kid is not listening to them. They they hate their job. You know they even don't have any like their level of optimism is like has reduced. It's like there's not even like optimism anymore. I'm saying. Um, and you know, I think that um, you got to keep things in perspective, man. 
You know, you yeah. got you got you, you got to know where you fit in on the court. Yeah, you, and you have to adapt. You gotta you gotta you, if you if stick and move. When you need to stick, move. When you need to move, stick. You know, like and you got to go through those things of. But don't lose fucking optimism, man. You know, yeah. don't don't lose that. You know, the there's pers- people the perspective. There's pe- yeah, the perspective that I know people are like, well, you know, I live in reality and this is reality. It's like, well, let me tell you no. something. Your reality is not mine. You're still sitting because yeah, the guy next to me, I'm like <laughs> most m- m- most of the time. I mean, some I mean, we live in a certain circular reality, but not everyone's faced with the same issue. So yeah. we're not going to perceive reality the same way. So, well, that's where that's where we that's where I looked at my wife in that situation. And I was just like. Yeah, we're still in a fucking vegan pizza shop in downtown Boston. Now, if you put some fucking... <laughs> now, I think if, if you had put a little bit of hot sauce on it, a little tequila, tequila... I still ate the pizza when I went home. The pizza was fine. Okay. It was just a bad playlist in the two, in the, in the 0, for, 0 for 2 wow. at, on the apps. I was yeah. like, ah, I can't yeah. do this. I can't do this. Yeah. We gotta go. You lost, but you didn't lose. Yeah. It's one of those things. You, you know, it's a, it's a seven-game series. They got game one. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And you come back maybe on and you know maybe a month later, maybe they surprise you. We'll see. More to come. Just like this podcast, cut to the chase podcast. More to come. More episodes to come. Nikki neighborhoods appreciate you, bro. Thank you. You know we got into some things. I like how we kind of go on tangents and we we just we just go. You know. Well, we learned a lot in this episode. I think we learned to know where you fit in. Okay. Just be quiet and. Mm-hmm. Don't be loud. Don't be loud. And just hit your open shots. Hit, hit your open shots. If you shots. Could do those three things consistently yeah. and be good, not great. If yeah. you can be good for a long period of time doing that, you're you're yeah, you're in great shape. Hit it while it counts. You know, um, not like Ray J. Well, um, yeah, that was a wait. That, yeah, probably I should have tough. That's a tough one. Yeah, um, he's doing okay. Yeah, he's doing quite well actually. Um, this episode is sponsored by Raycon. Raycon Beats. Get them, get them while you can. <laughs> and uh, great episode. And uh, yeah, follow me at Chase Abel. Chase Abel, guys. Cut to the Chase podcast. Um, this will definitely be uh, on YouTube and stuff and everywhere. So um, just subscribe. You know, I'm going to push subscribers, subscriptions, subscribers, you know. So um, there will be a Cut to the Chase podcast, um, you know, channel on YouTube. So hit subscribe. Um, it'd be dope and share share uh share the podcast tell your friends tell a friend tell them who the heck you know if anyone's listening and cares to listen to some people talk about stuff <laughs> that's what we do um and all that good jazz so at chase able follow me at chase able nick what they got you at pain in my side on instagram yep well that's what we do we talk about we talk about travel we talk about restaurants we talk about customer service we talk about life uh and i'm excited to to keep pumping these episodes up yeah man so uh guys have a great week um and you know get after it and uh, we'll see you next time 